In 1995, writer and director Amy Heckerling defined a generation of teens, again, with a little movie called Clueless. Based loosely on Jane Austen's Emma and featuring a cast of almost complete unknowns, many of whom would go on to be household names, the film was a moderate success at the time and has since become a cultural Rosetta Stone for 90s teen slang and fashion, or at least a highly idealized Beverly Hills version of 90s teen slang and fashion. One of the key ingredients to that success was Heckerlin's brilliant script, whole chunks of which remain seared into the brains of every Gen Xer. So now, nearly 30 years since its release, the great pop culture wants to know, what is the best Clueless quote ever? I taught Elton how to go from suck to blow. I'm your host, Eric Resniak. Please welcome my panel for this episode. We're all friends because we know what it's like for people to be jealous of us. Grateful for the bus driver who'd take a chance on an unknown kid, it's Ama Marfo. I very nearly was tardy today, so let's get this going. It, tardiness is a group effort. It's not just one person. Uh, if you do anything to this next panelist, I got a 45 and a shovel. I doubt anyone would miss you. It's Amy Pilot. <laughs> uh, as if. Hello, my friends. Hello, Amy. We're glad to have you back. Fresh off his stint as captain of the Pismo Beach disaster relief effort. Welcome back, Bob Erlenbach. Eric, my debates are unresearched, unstructured, and totally unconvincing. But I'm here. Correct. She found a cranberry CD in the quad and totally snagged it. It's Carissa Claus. Suck on that, Elton. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how picky she is about her shoes. It's Kate Reculia. And those only go on my feet. Indeed. <laughs> As you may have noticed, this is a supersized panel. This was easily the most sought after a season five topic for the GPCD panelists. So I decided to throw a little veil party. We're going to act of these lines for you. So please bear with us and appreciate the work of the GPCD players and hopefully not sporadically. So how does this work? Since this is a mini sode, there was no public poll. Our panelists thought long and hard about their favorite clueless quotes and they picked their individual top 15. We compared notes, moved forward the ones with multiple votes, and then pushed up a few of our personal favorites. We added those top 16 quotes to a bracket at random, and now we argue out it and insult each other for your amusement. Want to play along at home? Go to greatpopculturedebate.com and find the polls and brackets tab. There you'll find the listener bracket for this and every episode. Make a copy for yourself and fill it out and see if your picks line up with ours. And with that, let's make this episode's virginity go from technical to non-existent and get into the debates. So first up, most of the panel was all about Cher's party side art history lesson, but Ama preferred the gospel according to the DMV. Hit it, and I'm going to have Amy start. You think she's pretty? No, she's a full on Monet. What's a Monet? It's like the painting. See, from far away, it's okay, but up close, it's a big old mess. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nicely done. And next for our DMV bit, I'm going to start with Carissa as Cher. Failed? Well, can't we just start over? I mean, I'm kind of having a personal problem. My mind was somewhere else. I mean, you saw that biker came out of nowhere, right? Oh, I swear I'll concentrate. I drive really good usually. Isn't there somebody else I can talk to? A supervisor or something? I mean, you can't be the absolute and final word in driver's licenses. Girly, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the messiah of the DMV. Now, get out of the car. Well done, everybody. That was really good. <laughs> Very good. Playhouse so, 90, eat your heart out. Exactly. <laughs> so with that being said, the actual quotes that are up for debate are the she's a full-on Monet versus I am the Messiah of the DMV. And I think right now we do have full-on Monet continuing. Uh, Ama, do you want to make any arguments for why DMV should move forward? It just feels like the pinnacle of bureaucracy power <laughs> just like pushing around like that's probably the most power that guy's ever had ever which and he's just like you know what today i'm gonna use it on this team who like there's a clear line yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just as someone who has been caught in the cogs of bureaucracy it just it felt it felt notable and like i'm fully aware that i'm not gonna win this argument but i just wanted that moment recorded for posterity Absolutely. It is big Patty and Selma Bouvier energy. It is. And it is. 
And it's also, yeah. it's the moment when Cher can't talk her way out of something, right? Like this yes. is like her real turning point in the movie. And the way that the, I, I, I don't even know the actor's name, the great character actor. I'm the Messiah of the DMV. Mm-hmm. I say also as someone who failed her first driving test. So yes, I <laughs> also failed my Ooh. first driving test. Oh, really? Oh yeah. 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 Did you totally pause? No, I, I <laughs> totally uh, perpendicular instead of parallel parked. <laughs> 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 that will do it. I turned to him and I was like, "Did I just fail?" And he's like, "Yes." <laughs> okay. Sounds like you were impotent and totally out of control. <laughs> Which you, sh- you should have gone where I went. The uh, exam guy never made the girls parallel park. Oh no. Yep, only the boys. Mm. Oh my god, that's scandalous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bloomer. Parallel parking isn't on the Florida test, so I I didn't learn until I was in my 20s, which explains everything you know about people who drive in Florida, but I hit a cone <laughs> oh. on the three-point turn, so um, that was I had to it. take it again. The Messiah yeah. of the DMV. <clears throat> so, Bob, why should Monet advance? Well, I think, really, you kind of hit it a little bit with your intro to the whole line altogether. There's that history lesson piece to it and, and really helping us understand what a Monet might really be. If Google had existed at the time, people would have run to their computers and Googled, what's a Monet, um, to take a look. So there's education involved here. And to be honest with you, it's it's probably one of the more applicable and most usable quotes that you yes. can use outside of the outside of the movie, right? Everybody, you know, at least most of the people that I associate with would probably use that in common it, we, commonly um, to ref- yes, yes yeah. correct um it's just very usable it's very it's very um flexible <laughs> I, I agree with that so ama and kate you're sticking with dmv correct I, i'm gonna go with monet i think monet has a little more cultural cachet um but i really do love messiah of the dmv <laughs> amy where are you on this one full-on monet and i definitely as a 12 year old, like used it. And I was like, I'm brilliant. <laughs> so I think that it, it advanced my social status personally. Carissa. Also Monet. Yeah. And this does not really, it's neither here nor they, but it does lead to the great Christian line where she's like, what do you think Christian? And his immediate response is Hagsville. <laughs> I, I also fought to get Hagsville on the ballot. I used it to a, a friend of mine from Spain the other day to describe someone on drag race. And he's like, what is the Hagsville? <laughs> I uh, love you, Tony. Uh, but with that said, I'm sorry to the DMV uh, voters. We are going to advance full on Monet. Uh, next up, most of us want to advance the harshest of burns, but Kate and Ama are ready to make a stand for the life lessons provided by Lady Liberty. And I'm going to have Amy start with Ty. I'm not good enough for Josh or something. I I just don't think that you mesh well together. You don't think we mesh well? Why am I even listening to you to begin with? You're a virgin who can't drive. (gasps) It still, it pierces me to my very core (laughs) these days. Uh, And Kate, why don't you go ahead and take it as Cher in her impassioned speech? So, okay. Like right now, for example, the Hadians need to come to America. But some people are all, what about the strain on our resources? Then it's like, when I had this garden party for my father's birthday, right? I said RSVP because it was a sit down dinner. But people came that like did not RSVP. So I was like totally bugging. I had to haul ass to the kitchen, redistribute the food, squish in extra place settings. But by the end of the day, it was like the more the merrier. And so if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things we could certainly party with the hadians and in conclusion may i please remind you that it does not say rsvp on the statue of liberty well done, well done. Mm-hmm. that you. was lovely thank you impassioned and that was in the debate club correct yes what does, what does um what's his face I, i'm Wallace Shawn, the- yeah uh, uh, Two stars or three stars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a different one. This is the mm-hmm. one where Amber says, if she doesn't do her assignment, I can't do mine. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Thank Hall, you. how can I respond to that? The assignment was <laughs> whatever. And she's talking about some party. Hello. Oh, it was his 50th birthday. <laughs> I, I will say, 
doing this, I also realized Amber is an essential part of that she film. Is? Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. And she has great lines and much in the way of the Steel Magnolias episode where I was like, I want to hear see Steel Magnolias from the perspective of that mm. woman who they terrorized, Janice, Janice Van Meter. Van Meter. <laughs> I want to see Clueless from the perspective of Amber, who's like just trying to get through high school. And here are these women who are totally mean to her for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So let's kind get some kind of reason. Okay, yes, that's true. She they did kind of have a reason. She was the worst, but also kind of the best. Um yeah. she's Bob, a good foil. Yeah. Well, Amy, first of all, you're you're arguing for uh Virgin Who Can't Drive. Why should we advance that? I, to me, this this is like a quote. Like this was like a, a such a dig, right? Like you like you just felt like, oh my god, Ty's getting the upper hand here, and this is her biggest this is what she can get away with. What what else is she gonna say to Cher, who is like everybody's jealous of her but she can just you know shove that knife right in her and say you're a virgin who can't drive and she's saying that while she's um boxing up all of the things she's collected from elton correct am i am i remembering that right she's yeah. burning them it's she's after she burned it at the fireplace the yes. towel from the party and the rolling with the homies cassette tape yes <laughs> she listened to it like every night <laughs> You can tell that her period of mourning would be, be considerable. considerable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay, great. And Kate, what about you? Why should this masterpiece of debate club continue on? I think this is a one of the m- moments in this movie that shows how smart this movie is, right? Uh, it's a it's a really thoughtful, excellent argument. Also, the government should get into the kitchen, rearrange some fucking things. <laughs> And we could totally party with, with the Hadians and many other people. Mm-hmm. Also, um, like, I believe and like, I feel my brain is a mess these days, but I'm pretty sure Alicia Silverstone thought it was actually pronounced Hadians. Yes, mm-hmm. that's correct. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. And we left it in. Because they're like, that's amazing. That's amazing. Don't fix it. Don't fix it. It's perfect. And I feel like that's partially, it's just sort of like the synergy of of uh, Alicia Silverstone, this character, Amy Heckerling's writing, it's just so good. And in conclusion, may I please remind you that it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. Like, it's just, it's so good. And so. <laughs> and so. <laughs> All right. Uh, another excellent argument. Uh, Ama, are you sticking with Statue of Liberty here? I am. And I say that in addition to the argument that Kate made, I will also say that it happened to come across my Facebook memories relatively recently that when the first Muslim ban hit, um, I posted this GIF, like, may I please remind you that doesn't say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. And it performed really well. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I feel like, yes, I have used a virgin who can't drive often, but I've also used, may I please remind you, that does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty, so I'm gonna hold to that. Yeah, what, I respect that. One is like one is like an epic slam, and one is like an epic own of our government. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like solid government policy. Yeah, yep. And in 2022, it's pretty sad that we still are having to, like, it is still applicable, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yep. and it could be more so. Um, Bob, where are you on this one? It's funny. Um, I'm recalling back to the beginning or pre- previous to starting this episode where the stakes could not be lower. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Kate kind of swayed me a little bit <gasps> um, with this argument. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of lean, I, I could kind of go either direction, but she's right. Is first of all, Cher is absolutely right in this, right? Mm-hmm. Am, Ambular is like, well, I can't even debate that. I'm just like, what? Because she's right. There's right. nothing to debate. <laughs> yeah. That's why you can't debate it. Um, and it's a re- it is a really great line. Um, gosh, I don't really know. I think I, if I was to have to pick, I, I don't know as though I, I really think about RSVP all that much, whereas virgin who can't drive i i've used i I can't keep relying on that argument but um gosh kate you did a really great job but i'm gonna stick to virgin (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm sticking with the virgin as well i'm sticking with the virgins too i'm sorry i'm i'm switching parties oh my god (laughs) 
So what happens now? So if, Amy's, if Amy's switching parties, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like anytime the Pope does anything, you can pull this back out. It is it remains culturally relevant. <laughs> I, I I think listening to Kate read it again and, and thinking about the yeah. how it still stands. Also, when you listen to it as just this one little little mm-hmm. blurb. Yeah, I kind of think like this could have been the entire motivation for Legally Blonde. Like, yes. Yes. could have yes. listened to this and been like, and now I'm going to write about a dumb blonde lawyer. Like, uh, who's actually really like smart really smart. Blonde. Blonde. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, I think in a lot of ways you don't get Legally Blonde without Clueless, but this is like a very yes. concrete example. Yes, exactly. So, yep. okay, that actually does mean that you all have the numbers now, Carissa. I want to say your Pope argument made me even more convinced that Virgin Who <laughs> Can't Drive should exist. So, thank you. Thank you. It is so true. He's also a full-on Monet. If we're being honest. Um, I mean, aren't we all though? Yeah, true. That will come up later, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but I also do want to address what was brought up. Like, oh my gosh, what happens? It's a six-person panel. What if we have a tie? It would be a tiebreaker situation. And since we have six people, um, I would actually start at the top of the order with Ama is the first tiebreaker, and then it would go to Amy, etc. And if you've never done a, a, some of the, the people on this podcast have never done a mini show before, I guarantee you we will get to tiebreakers because um minisodes since they're based on panelist choice tend to be extremely um personal in the arguments so Mm -hmm. we will get there but so either way rsvp goes forward correct rsvp is is continuing to the next round well done for all the arguments uh chris i I didn't burn and i didn't burn um we didn't burn amas um tie vote tie vote no we didn't so she still gets to be able to use it later yes mm. very survivor logic there i mean mm-hmm. the thing is there are there are no bad choices here so yeah, there are no. that, that, nope. that whole thing. speech and scene is amazing it's like our intro to the school and what the kids are like it's really great so it's yeah. great and it like pushes in on her as like patriotic music plays in the background mm-hmm. so, so well yep. done Next, the vast majority of the panel was a fan of pert, supple buttocks, but I preferred a perfectly delivered casual party read. I'm going to start as Cher, and Amba will be my Amber, so say Ambular. Hi. Was that you going through my laundry? As if. Like, I would really wear something from Judy's. Do you prefer Fashion Victim or Ensemble Challenged? And next, we're going to have Carissa as Ty. Ugh, Cher, I don't want to do this anymore. And my buns, they don't feel nothing like steel. <laughs> uh, Bob, are you going oh, to shit. Okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just, it was a really good. It was great. Okay. okay, okay. It'll get easier, I promise. Just as long as we do it every day. Not just sporadically. We had to get sporadically in there, folks. We sporadically. Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, so, um, oh, I have to argue for this crap. Uh, yeah. Carissa, you go first. <laughs> I mean, I just think my buns feel nothing like steel is just so <laughs> great, especially if you grew up seeing buns of steel, you know, like my mom had the Jane Fonda VHS tapes, um, but, you know, every, buns of steel was everywhere and the thigh master thing. And so seeing high schoolers do it and then also just as far as usability in everyday life, my buns don't feel nothing like steel is very applicable to my life. I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm in the gay community. Absolutely. <laughs> buns are very important to us culturally. Big uh, thick cakes. Big, big thick, thick cakes. cakes. Absolutely. And that's something no one could have predicted in the 90s that our culture, and not just for gay people, but like literally all culture has become so focused on butts. Like, mm-hmm. they I played were- roller derby. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ty was like a Cassandra for us, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. She saw the future. Um, my argument as for why we should continue with fashion, on, a fashion victim or ensemble challenge is it's just, it also part of it is a delivery, right? She's literally just walking by this girl at a party and just reads her to filth so effortlessly. And then, of course, the response, which there is no, like, verbal response. It's just like, oh. Like she goes whatever knows. she mouths whatever yeah. with yeah. the with the w like she knows there's no comeback to that because she has just been read for filth <laughs> and i love it like that that gives sucker to my soul um i'm gonna start here with kate which way are you going 
My buns, they don't feel nothing like steel. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ama? I'm going to say buns, nothing like steel. It is a beautiful Brittany Murphy line reading. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, mm-hmm. It's some of the hot highest level of her work and i'm just like oh god that's it right there like you can see her and her with her little like thing tied around her waist Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like so (laughs) aggrieved at having to squat like yes yes aggrieved (laughs) aren't we all amy uh buns of steel for sure buns of steel buns not steel i should say (laughs) true and bob Buns, nothing like steel. <laughs> okay, so we've got those buns, Huns, and we'll be moving those along. Uh, next, the vast majority of the panel preferred to advance wise words about the perils of PE, but Kate wanted to answer, what's in a name? And Kate, you'll start first to share. Deanna and I were both named after great singers of the past who now do infomercials. Thank you. And Bob... So much great voiceover in this movie. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Bob, you will be Amber, and Amy will be Dion. Miss Stoker, my plastic surgeon doesn't want me doing anything, any activity where balls fly at my nose. Well, there goes your social life. <laughs> Good job, Amy. <laughs> well delivered. Thank you. Um, so, Kate, you started your argument saying so much great voiceover. Go ahead and continue there. Uh, it's just so uh, one of the things that's so witty and incredible about the script and is very sort of Jane Austen is that kind of narrative voice that Cher tells us the story of this world. And this is just such it's in the very beginning. It's when she's introducing you to like her life and her best friend and Cher and Dion are both named after great singers of the past who now do infomercials, which but like both situate situates them exactly in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Right. Like mm-hmm. the Cher and Dion Warwick from like the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, like would be the past. <laughs> and yeah. and now they're doing infomercials. It's just it's just a really clever character building, uh, witty voiceover. I love it. And isn't it sad we don't really have info? I guess we still have infomercials, but you don't see them anymore. Like, well, it's the internet. I guess. <laughs> yeah. All of the internet is one giant infomercial. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. slap chop, etc. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Bob. What about uh, balls flying at my face? So this is interesting because I'm arguing for balls fly at my face um, or at my nose, excuse me, um, something I might not be entirely unfamiliar with. But, um, <laughs> but it's actually like I could actually go either way. I think I, I really love the exchange of these lines, right? Because yeah. I, I would have to say like. I, I don't see myself. There has to be some utility in quotes for me to to think that to think they're great. I think it's a great line. I think it's a great quote. The Dion piece. Um, Dion and I were named after great singers of the past who now do infomercials. Is a great line. Um, but from this quote, I I can tell you. I again, it's a pair. I always, I use there goes your social life all the time. Um, mm-hmm. But I've also used balls flying at my nose as well. <laughs> whenever whenever somebody throws something across the room. Um, Never so, throw things at a gay man, by the way. That is a rule. Don't do but, you know, I think for me, that's why I would lean the way towards the nose is because I think it's it's a hysterical exchange. I think the other one is a, a good humorous exchange, but this one's just like a really great moment of, of hilarity. Again, Ambular is amazing in this film. It Watching it for this episode, I was like, gosh, she's got the zingers and she's got she's got the really good lines in there. And she's really great at the snappy at the snappy, like kind of come back to all of Cher's bullshit. So um i i'm gonna go with that's why oh, i'm gonna go it's like i'm voting i'm arguing for it what am i doing here so um <laughs> so yeah i think that's my argument there okay uh carissa uh i'm with there goes your social life i that whole that exchange is great i think d is just really great in that whole scene that's also where she um has a note from her tennis instructor about not engaging in teaching that might derail his training yes. <laughs> so yep, that might derail my his teachings <laughs> yeah so the whole, so I, yeah there goes your social life that's that scene there's other there's another quote from that scene on this bracket yes that scene there alone is. is a golden scene like you know. there's so many lines in just that that few minutes alone it's true amy oh the, i mean the balls fly at the nose a hundred percent um yes. I just want to say that this was like one of those, again, I was 12 when this movie came out. I probably was watching it like 12, 13, 14. And I, I really think that it was one of those where it, I didn't understand it the first few times. And then when I did, I was like, Oh my God, I think this is the smartest, funniest movie I've ever heard. 
it, yeah. it's true mm-hmm. the double entendre there is so good because like you could it could be just innocent and still funny but like you're like, oh okay yeah got it um and well, let's see ama what about you where are you on this one so both of these were on my initial list and frankly the balls flying at the nose felt like a foregone conclusion eric if you'll remember i wrote it as something to the effect of like balls nose etc we all know this is gonna happen <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> And even though I love the infomercial line, especially because, and I think on my list, I also wrote like now living really healthy and entertaining lives on Twitter. Yes. Um, Yes. Yes. So I do love that. But when I think about like this scene in the movie, this line, as it directly connects to Clueless, like balls flying at my nose is the answer here. Wasn't it in the trailer? I feel like this is one of the like y- things they used to like sell the movie was this quick exchange. I think it was. It would have been brilliant yeah. for them to do that. Yeah. A trailer is in the 90s sort of so like different. Like yes. clever, raunchy, like, <laughs> yeah. exchange, yeah. That is true. That is true. And thank you for making the point. Like, we, we opened this by saying that this movie is now almost 30 years old. 30 years ago, Cher and Dionne Warwick were doing infomercials for, like, the Psychic Friends Network and selling, like, candles and, and like, bondage furniture for your bedroom. <laughs> and now, like, they are the queens of Twitter. Of Twitter. <laughs> and what an amazing, like, third act. God love it. Um, did, did anyone not vote? Does everybody vote, Kate? I'm assuming you're with. I'm gonna stick with the infomercials, but like balls at, at, at my nose, like is, is an icon. So yeah, I, I I have to go with the balls at your nose. I literally use this all the time, especially yes. with my friends, where it's just like, oh my god, I, I screwed up my knee. I was like, there goes your social life. Like, <laughs> it's actually applicable because the friends that I have, they're they're just whores. Um, I did I did screw up my knee a little bit. Uh, well, there he goes your social life. <laughs> So uh, we will be adm- advancing the gym scene uh, next. We have uh, we are evenly split between a 100% true observation about teen dating and an oblique reference to the softer side of Sears. And I'm going to have Ama start as Cher. Searching for a boy in high school is as useless for searching for meaning in a Polly Shore movie. And I'm going to have Carissa start as Miss Stoger and Amy as Amber. Ty, you don't have time to change, but you could hit a few balls in those clothes. She could be a farmer in those clothes. <laughs> oh, I knew you would nail that, Amy. I, <laughs> that. <laughs> I, like, I was just like, who's going to do good with that one? Oh, Amy will. Um, <laughs> oh, you in high school. Oh. <laughs> I didn't say that, but if that's how you wanted to interpret that. In high school? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> so, Ama, um, tell us why this quote, the searching for a boy in high school quote is worth advancing well it feels timeless in the sense of like searching for a boy in your 30s is still as useless as searching for meeting in a poly <laughs> short movie mm-hmm. um, but it also and again too like it is both timeless and highly specific like there was yes. a very particular time that poly shore was the reference for that <laughs> yes <laughs> like, and it's just moved on to other people like i is Dak Shepard now? I think it's Dak Shepard. I think we've moved past Dak Shepard even. I feel like we have to be to a new... There must be someone else. Mm. <sighs> oh, my gosh. We'll get back to that. Does anyone know any young people? <laughs> <laughs> but it just it's a timeless sentiment and a highly specific reference all in one, and it's just great, great, great writing. All right. And Amy, why should the farmer in these clothes advance? It, it's it's just it, like it it sets amber up for the character that she is like she is just this girl just walked into school and they're already making fun of her she could be a farmer in those clothes like that is just I mean, no farms no food amber <laughs> i i mean i don't know i think it was just again sometimes the, the blows in this movie and and i mean we I won't go there, but um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but the, you can go there, Amy. The, the hits that they take at each other are so high school and so mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so high school. It really it's is. So high school. School. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. I mean, three of us went to high school together, and I feel like we, <laughs> we were nice, right? No, actually, I'm thinking back. I mean, it wasn't intentionally mean. We were we were pretty nice, like by and large, we were pretty mm. nice. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there's I mean, the to people Vanessa faces, thing. But like, yeah. Revisionist history. <laughs> um, but there is truth that, like, teenagers can be really incredibly cruel for no reason. And yes. uh, this just nails this in the most kind of, like, innocent way possible. I'm it's, gonna, like, offhand. It's yeah. true. It's it's so offhand. Carissa, where are you, where are you coming down on this one? I'm with the farmer. I just think it's such a dig. And the way that she says, you, you could be a farmer in those clothes. It's just so snotty. <laughs> and mm-hmm. also, uh, I remember Bob used it semi-recently about a, like one of Eric's theater pictures from <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> old queen or something. We were wearing, and I was just like, I cackled. So, uh, mm. yeah, that, was- that was the edge. <laughs> The Munchkin Farmer in the Lafayette oh, Junior Senior High yep, production of The Wizard yep. of Oz. Thank you, there you very go. much. Um, you, you looked like a farmer. I did. I did. And I was a farmer. Uh, we used to make our own maple syrup. Bob can tell you about that. Um, <laughs> oh, God. It's so true. Uh, Bob, speaking of you, what, what are, were you voting here? Well, Carissa, thanks for taking my argument from the <laughs> um, I will say, I will speak from personal experience. When you find yourself in a position to be able to execute this line effectively, it is one of the most rewarding feelings you will ever have in your life. Um, this You're... line is such a good day. It is so good. <laughs> Would you say that I, you're, I... you're planting seeds that you're <laughs> oh, yes. reaping? Boo. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's so satisfying <laughs> uh bumper crops all right uh so ama are you sticking with a boy in high school i am and kate i am a boy in high school i i don't even know why i this just like popped into my mind unbidden like <laughs> like a month or two ago and i was like searching for a boy in high school is as useless as teaching for me it was was some other thing i was like and i just feel like as a cultural object that now for us it was like a rosetta stone right but it but for like youngs now looking to understand the 90s like does the poly shore part of it need to be like this is the annotated version here is poly shore here is biodome like like, i just think i think it's one of the things that places it in time but it is also another killer moment of um voiceover and and show and it's such a like philosophical construction and such a silly line at the same time right like and Cher's not wrong Mm. (laughs) she's not wrong i the issue i have with the line is maybe the poly shore piece i don't know it hits for us but i don't know if it i don't think it would hit to with other folks today like they they probably wouldn't wouldn't have the same reverence for the line as we do no Um, but I, I but actually really like that about it. I like yeah, that same. it's so specific because I think... It's your inside joke. Yes. I mean, it's an inside joke. It positions it in its time. It's one of those things that kind of lets you know that, like, like when we were growing up, and I, I feel like age-wise this would probably still hold for everybody on the panel, but, like, Greece was a big thing, but there are, like, mm-hmm. very specific references in Greece that probably make more sense to people who were teens at that moment. Totally. So you can enjoy it overall, but there are like a handful of things that are like, this is for you if you grew up with it. Polly Shore is that for this. Oh, Polly Shore. It's like (laughs) when they say that um, Rizzo's PG. And I remember being like, the fuck does that mean? It's like a teenager. Oh, yeah. Back in the 50s, like you knew exactly what that meant. That's that's such a good point. Yeah. Um, I I will also say on behalf of the Polly Shore, well, the boy in high school line, the way she delivers it, because she has a feather pen, right? Yes, Mm -hmm. she does. And she's like, Mm -hmm. it's right before Christian walks in. Yes. Yes. And I had had a pen to my mouth when you read it. This is an audio medium, but I needed to do it to let get to get to the place to access the line. It's method over here. Yes. Nice stems. Does nice you say that? Yes. yes. Can I say the, the best part is it's she she's not even saying it out loud. She says she lit, mouths the word damn when he walks in the room. It's so good. <laughs> and then she casually drops the pen. Like she knew what she was doing. And she elbows it off the table. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so good. Um, did everybody else vote? I think everybody did you, voted. Did you vote? I didn't vote, but I'm sticking okay. with the farmer in these clothes because it really is just so brutal. Um, even <laughs> though I might have put boy in high school on my original panel, but I still think the farmer in these clothes is, is – uh, and I, I appreciate the argument that 
it's it is too time specific even though the overarching message is true like obviously completely different types of shows but euphoria for instance trying to <laughs> those boys in high school completely different yeah. a completely different pointless yeah. um will kill you kind of pointless so yeah. there you go um all right so another split this time behind shares celine dion scored revelation and her assured take on driving i'm gonna have ama start as dion and carissa as Cher. hello that was a stop sign i totally paused well done and let's see if i can get through this folks okay all right all right i'm ready i'm so ready my body is ready it's I'm wait, been sure. waiting my whole life for this oh god i to disappoint you just like i've done to so many other men all right okay so he's kind of a baldwin what would he want with ty she couldn't make him happy just needs someone with imagination someone who can take care of him someone to laugh at his jokes in case he ever makes any then suddenly oh my god I love Josh. I am majorly, totally, but crazy in love with Josh. Oh, yay! yay. Counting. <laughs> so good. All right. So, uh, Carissa, why totally paused? Because as much as I love the revelation with the fountains and the moment with Josh, right? And like, and like Paul Rudd, like flashing oh images of Paul God. Rudd at the screen. Like, Being adorable and doing that little side smile. So Timeless yeah. beauty. Paul yes. Rudd. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Right. And, and your beautiful delivery, Eric. I think I totally paused is just way more usable. And also like, this is at the very beginning when Cher very first picks up D and they're going to school and she's talking about her Jeep and how her friends are and she's drive, driving terribly. Like this is her intro to this person and to <laughs> how she minimizes things that don't bother her uh, or that she feels above or exempt from. Uh, so I think I think it's great and for character development as well as usability. Doesn't she then immediately go on to... Um, drive off with someone's side view mirror say oops should i leave a note that's that's she takes out a giant planter on her way to d's <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> thank, you. thank you um okay so my argument for this one you are correct i totally pause can be used constantly like it, it's just one of those things where it's it's easy to put in your everyday lexicon i'm totally but crazy in love with blank is less so it's it's a little bit like <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> and yet, simultaneously, we all know what it means. Exactly we, what that means. We know what it means to be butt crazy in love with chiquitos. We know what it's <laughs> love to be, you know. Um, but that is that is essentially my argument. I'm going to pass it to Amy. Where are you voting here? Totally paused. Um, and I, I just also think that this was, again, for me, like a high school movie that you were like, oh, oh. She's learning how to drive and, um, oh, she doesn't have her license yet, but she's driving around in her Jeep. And like, this is like co-driving. Like when you're with your best friend and you both don't have a license, but like <laughs> if you drive together, like it kind of equals a license. Mm. <laughs> I, I, it, it, again, maybe I didn't grow up in Beverly Hills, but it wasn't so far off. So I feel very attached to that one. Teen driver calculus two yes. dr two learners <laughs> permits equal a full license. Yes, exactly. Uh, Ama. I used, I totally paused in the process of learning to drive dozens of times, including <laughs> once to my father, when he was like, I had like gently run a stop sign to the back of our neighborhood and he was like, oh, you, you didn't stop. And I was like, I totally paused, which he has no reference to this. He <laughs> doesn't remember, but it was very important to me that I expressed it that way, which is anyone who knows me well, very much who I am, but also like proves the, like, this is a quote with a great deal of actual utility. Yep. Fair, Bob. I agree with everything that Ama just said. I think for me, with I totally pause, that's where I'm going with this. Um, it's her delivery as well. And for me personally, I can't say I totally pause. Well, I totally pause. Like I can't, yeah, yeah. when I'm able to use it, I can't help but do it in Cher's voice, mm -hmm. at least Cher's voice in my brain. Um, and it's, 
that totally butt crazy in love with Josh. I think when I think about this film or if I were to say I totally paused to a group in a, a room, they're going to know exactly what I'm saying. But if mm-hmm. I say totally butt crazy in love with Josh, I think that that number would probably go down as to the total number of people that would recognize it in the room. I think yeah. it's something that um, one of the lines that stuck out in this movie that kind of um, – was one of the ones that was easy to take away and people picked up on it very quickly. Um, I like butt crazy in love with Josh after repeated viewings and kind of picking up additional quotes along the way. Okay. That's, that's a good argument. Kate. I mean, literally every time I roll through a stop sign (laughs) to this day, Yeah, do I think in my head, I totally, totally paused. paused. I totally paused. <laughs> like it's just, it's so. This movie, like Heather's, I feel like I saw both of them so much as a young person, and then I saw Clueless. Maybe I was in my like mid thirties, and it was shocking to me how much of my just like everyday lexicon is from this film. And I totally paused as one of the biggest things. Um, but also, like, but crazy in love with Josh is is a wonderful moment and you know all by myself is playing in the background etc but totally paused but wait it, okay. you didn't see clueless until you were in your mid 30s oh no, no oh no 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 i saw oh. it as like a teenager it yes. was like oh. i have failed you as a friend <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you off of this podcast <laughs> we, okay Kate has left the room no i definitely saw it as a teenager but when i saw it like, way later yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, can God, i like, totally like, pause like, here for a second <laughs> 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 This 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 quote reminds me of a story. When I was still living in Lafayette, New York, Eric still lived there as well. Me. We were driving home probably from the movies off of Interstate 81, getting off at the Nedro exit, got to the bottom of the hill. He was in the passenger seat. Oh, no. I looked one way and I said, hey, is it, does it look clear on your side? Which you're never supposed to do as a driver. I will admit it's not it's, their job to search for me. Especially um, to look with Eric. On, on, <laughs> I, go, I go, it's good, good on my way. Or good my direction. How about you? Good. Oh yeah, it's totally clear. And then this car goes right in front of me he goes and then eric goes right after that car (laughs) so true so literally everywhere that is totally paused Uh, thank you. Not totally paused. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. I knew exactly what oh, I was what going. A, what a journey. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so um, I actually think Kate pointed out a really important part uh, that, that actually makes me change my, my vote too, totally paused, which is that it's not so much the quote of But Crazy in Love with Josh that I love. It is that it's everything going into that scene. It is the fountain, the Celine mm-hmm. Dion, the like yep. mm-hmm. superimpositions of, oh, of Paul Rudd. Of the, the, Paul Rudd's face. It, it is like the first like time as a teenager where you're like, oh my God, she's having an epiphany, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Um, I love that. And But it, the quote itself is not really that important. So I'm completely fine moving it over to Totally Paused. It's, it's a great quote and, and it's usable. So I, I will also just say that that moment re-watching it in, in your 30s you watch it now and go oh my god i'm totally but crazy in love with paul rudd and that has stuck <laughs> with me for almost 30 years yeah. yes so, yeah, absolutely yeah. like he, that just it's the whole moment can just be you know picked up and taken with you at all times in life being in love with paul rudd he's the reigning sexiest man alive mm. you know, yeah. i don't see it in 2020 <gasps> right <laughs> I want it that way. <laughs> We're not going there. We're not going there. We're not doing this. We just finna- if you haven't listened to the best boy band episode again, back to your corners, the two of you. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, if you want an actual like objective lesson in how smart Cher Horowitz was, she picked Paul Rudd back in 1995, and that mm-hmm. was still a good investment. So mm-hmm. kudos to you. Where are the other like 90s heartthrobs, huh? Johnny Depp. No, I'm. We'll, we'll leave it there. <laughs> there. Are, please don't be problematic, Paul Rudd. No, <laughs> like, we need you fine. to not be He's good. He's good. He's good. He's on his skin. He's fine. Good. Yeah. He good, just good, bought a candy good. store. Yes. What? He bought a candy store along with who was the other person he bought it with, Amy? Oh, um, someone equally as like lovable. Um, yeah, it's like another famous Hollywood actor. There was hold on, hold on. I'm searching it for Paul Rudd's candy store. The person <laughs> had cancer and died, right? Right, Amy? Yeah, it's in upstate New York. Oh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Oh, and, and okay. It, 
It's in New York, and there was a local, like, main street candy store. The owner died, and they live in the area. Rhinebeck! And bought it so that the town wouldn't lose its, like, old-school homey candy store. I love this so much. This is the one thing so far this year that's given me hope. (laughs) Again, (laughs) invest in Paul Rudd. You will will (laughs) reap benefits. You were going to say something, Kate? I just am looking at pictures of like Paul Rudd, like printed on, it looks like a a cookie. And it's like, it's, it's a picture of Paul Rudd eating a cookie printed on a cookie. Incredible. I want to go to there. (laughs) Well, we'll make a trip to Rhinebeck. We should should do an episode from there. Like let's go get candy and wait it out for Paul Rudd. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Next in our only unanimous decision in round one, the entire panel decided that shares that's way harsh, Ty. Outquoted Josh's exciting news about getting Marky Mark to plant a celebrity tree, even with his busy, busy pants dropping schedule. <laughs> Finally, in round one, the majority of the panel wants to put forward one of the most oft repeated two word, four letter phrases of the late 1990s. But Eric and Ama appreciated a quote that had a bit more urgency to it. I'm going to start with Bob as Mr. Hall and Ama as Cher. Cher Horwitz, two tardies. I object. Do you recall the dates of these alleged tardies? One was last Monday. Mr. Hall, I was surfing the Crimson Wave. I had to haul ass to the ladies. I assume you're referring to women's troubles, so I'll let that one slide. (laughs) That was an amazing Wallace Shawn impression. (laughs) Nice to write about you. (laughs) You Amma did a great Wallace Shawn, you're right. (laughs) <laughs> no, that was excellent uh, and uh, very good. We'll, we'll be doing a, a dinner with Andre uh, episode yeah. next season. Uh, Kate, why don't you take it a share? I don't know why Dion's going out with a high school boy. They're like dogs. You have to clean them and feed them. They're just like these nervous creatures that jump and slobber all over you. Ugh, get off me. Oh, as if. <laughs> And just to be clear, as if is the quote there specifically versus I had to haul ass to the ladies. Um, I should explain. I almost took as if off of the bracket when I was putting it together (gasps) because I was like, is it even a quote? It's two words. It's four letters. Does it count? And Bob's like, "Uh, no, (laughs) you need to put that right back on. Um, So I'm going to have Kate uh, explain why two words, four letters deserves to advance. As if is just in the American popular vernacular, and it wasn't before this movie, and in it, to a degree that it is now, right? It is so the way she says "as if" as her catchphrase. It is so um, clever, right? Because "as if," right? Like it's it's the start of like of, of a of a slightly more complex sentence, <laughs> and she just uses it to say everything about as if she could ever be anything other than what she is right and obviously is the story of her learning to be a better person um it both like works with the character it is so funny it is so clueless that said i really do love surfing the crimson wave another thing that i regularly say <laughs> <laughs> and with that ama do you want to take it as to why we should advance surfing the crimson wave So, I mean, I think as if is a very clear contribution that Clueless has made to the larger, like, lexicon of language. Surfing the Crimson Wave is kind of like the indie underground version of that, wherein, Mm -hmm. like, if you Mm -hmm. talk to somebody and you use it and they get it, you know why. Whereas someone might be saying as if and not be connecting it to Clueless. So. I think it is a more, again, I'm very much about enjoying something on the basis of specificity and it is so specific, but like, you know, exactly what's being said. And like, Mr. Hall's just like, I know what that means. I will not address it any further. And I'll even grant you the point because I don't want to belabor this. So like, it does exactly what it needs to do to the point where like women I know now in their thirties and forties still use it to people. And it still has that effect on men, even though we're all adults and they should probably just get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Generally men are just like, Oh, okay. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not even going to bother discussing this any further. I will assume you're referring to women's troubles. <laughs> <laughs> Then in the voice of Rex from Toy Story, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> Before he was Rex from Toy Story. So. Well, same year. Same year. Was it the same really? year? Yeah. They're both 1995. Wow. Holy crow. Big year Damn. for Wallace Shawn, folks. Big year. Um, Amy, where are you? Um, As if. Carissa. It, oh, go ahead. So, go ahead, Amy. I was just going to say, it, it is more than a quote. It was... 
I mean, it, it just became language. It, it created new, new wording. It's brilliant. It's a lifestyle, really. Um, Carissa. Yeah, I'm with as if I was like 15 when I, I saw this in the movie theater when it came out. And the things that became part of my everyday lexicon were as if and not on the bracket, whatever, which yeah. is usually said by Amber um, a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But like those became those, those were the most usable. You could use Monet. You could use other things. Crimson Wave, um, but only in specific you know, instances. Um, this one was really hard for me though, because I do love surfing the crimson wave. It's just like, it's so literal to how it feels sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and it's so like wonderful the way she's just like, yeah, I have my period, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, as like a seeing that in a movie. Right. And like, no shame, no hiding. She's like, I was surfing the crimson wave. Yeah, like, It's as close to someone just flat out saying like, I was late cause I had my period that you felt like you could get. And I was like nine or 10 probably when I saw this for the first time. And I was just like, she said, what? Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> And also she's wearing her beret and she has the feather pen and like it's and this is her trying to be a lawyer, right? Like her dad. Mm-hmm. It's all just everything about it is perfection. These alleged tardies. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting to point out that like she also grew up without a mom and she's still like, I'm not going to be embarrassed about my period. Like mm-hmm. typically in that situation with it, like it's just a dad raising you. There's that kind of like, oh, this is really awkward. And I don't know what I'm talking about. But she's very kind of owning it and just like, this mm-hmm. is who I am, which I think is kind of cool i'd never thought about it just like literally yeah i never thought about either so dan hedaya like was like your period's gonna be like this (laughs) like (laughs) it's it's like big mouth and what's his face um uh uh, what's his face's father i can't think of andrew's father andrew andrew glauberman's father (laughs) as voiced by richard kind just yeah angry and oh yeah yeah uh bob where are you on this one i'm sticking with as if so I think, Amma, you and I are outnumbered because I'm assuming Kate's sticking with, with as if. I am going to stay with that as if. But Crimson Wave is just like, there are no wrong choices here. Yes. Yes. It's true in this in this matchup. Surfing the Crimson Wave is terrific. I even use it. <laughs> <laughs> when? Yeah, I was going to say, dot, 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 when? <laughs> Once I use it, next time I use it, I'll report back. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's part of our feminine mystique. So... <laughs> With that being said, uh, that is the end of round one. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to Melrose. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to round two of our best clueless quote debate. While we were gone, we listened to some Billie Holiday. We love him. Before we get to round two, <laughs> let's discuss how listeners can be rolling with our homies by following us on social media. Ama, where can people follow you? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ama Marfo, as well as on YouTube, where I have recordings of the comedy shows that I hosted through the January stay at home part of the pandemic. Amazing. Uh, Amy, how about yourself? Well, if you want to hear my opinions, you can follow me on Twitter at AmySP83. Um, if you want to see my children, Amy Pilot on Instagram. Um, and if you want to do a 90s ride with me and jam to some uh, Cody Rigsby, uh, Amy Spins 83 on Peloton. And Bob, how about yourself? Well, you can find me on Instagram or on Twitter at DizNerdBob, but only if you want to follow me. I'm always totally bugging. Totally bugging. <laughs> Uh, Carissa, yourself? Uh, I am on Instagram sometimes and Twitter rarely as at Carissa Kloss. And Kate? I'm hanging out on the grassy knoll over there um, on Instagram as Gomez Rack with my cats. And Kate Reculli at Twitter only occasionally. Great. You're such a burnout. <laughs> <laughs> but I can draw, I can draw Marvin the Martian. He's my favorite. <laughs> He's my favorite. <laughs> and for me, you should definitely follow at Great Pop Culture Debate on Instagram and at culture underscore debate on Twitter. Uh, But if you're jeeping, you can slide into my DMs and follow (laughs) at Eric Resniak on Instagram or Twitter. So uh, moving on to the debates. First up, we have she's a full-on Monet versus it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. And we're just going to go around the horn here and get people's picks on this one. Uh, I'm going to go alphabetically. Ama, where do you come down on this one? 
I'm holding with the RSVP. All right. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Amy, what about you? Full on Monet. Bob. Full on Monet. Carissa. Full on Monet. Kate. I'm I'm RSVP. I'm 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 sticking with it. <gasps> I, I know. I, I'm not going to switch on this one. I think it's full okay. on Monet okay. is um it is a brutal read because it's also like you know exactly what she's saying but she doesn't even have to say it. You know what I mean? And I do use it constantly. Uh people- And you know Claude Monet, I'm sure uh, on his deathbed was like someday. <laughs> <laughs> someday. Exactly. <laughs> it's the best thing he ever did. All right. So we're going to advance Cheese of Full Monet to the final four. Next up, it's My Buns Don't Feel Nothing Like Steel versus Balls Fly Up My Nose slash There Goes Your Social Life. I really feel like those are a package deal. They uh, are. Yes. <laughs> oh. such a, literally, such a- figuratively, that's like a, a triple entendre, I think. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an entendre parfait. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> delicious parfaits uh, let's go the opposite order this time Kate where are you coming down this one's really really hard I am gonna give it to buns don't feel nothing like steel because Brittany Murphy's delivery of it is so wonderful R.A.P. Brittany Murphy oh god what a tragedy what like a tragedy. seriously Jesus sorry I didn't mean to bring down the pod it's but... okay it's fine uh, Carissa I'm with balls and social life Mm. Bob, I'm usually with balls, um, <laughs> but uh, I just realized how much I actually preparing for this. I realized how much I actually use buns. Don't feel nothing like steel. I say it all the fucking. I say it all the fucking time. So I'm going with buns. Yep. Amy, balls, and Ama. I love the idea of immortalizing Brittany Murphy in this bracket. It's going to buns buns so that's currently by my count three buns three buns two balls six buns buns. six (laughs) buns four balls depending on how you're counting i have to go with balls i have to um (laughs) for me as a person um, (laughs) also for this bracket and so that does leave us to a tie and that means ama is our first tiebreaker so ama you make the decision I'm advancing buns. Yes. 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 My uh, buns. I don't feel nothing like steel. If it makes you feel better, pick cakes. Amy, <laughs> you are the next tiebreaker, so you will make the if if we come up to anything else. So okay, I just want to say that I did have I had balls all the way on on my initial bracket. So I, um, all the way. I had balls all the way. So this is this is crushing to me that you know. That's why we're friends, number one, Amy. And number two, <laughs> never crush the balls. Just put that out there. All right. Uh, next up, she could be a farmer in those clothes versus I totally paused. Uh, and I'm going to start in the middle of the pack this time, Bob. Oh, oh, come back. Come back to me. No, no. <laughs> You're fine, fine. Oh, God, this is tough. She could be a farmer in those clothes. <laughs> it's so fun to say. It is. So I'm going to go with farmer in those clothes. Carissa. I am not sure where to go with this. So I just looked at my original bracket and I said totally paused. So that's my vote. <laughs> totally <Okay>. paused. <laughs> Amy. Um, paused. Totally paused. Uh, Kate. I totally paused. Ama. Paused. Okay, so um, it doesn't matter what I vote. Totally paused is advancing here. What uh, would you have picked? <laughs> I probably would have picked farmer, to be honest with you. Ooh, because have. it's history for you. It is. I, <laughs> that I, was I once was a farmer in those clothes. Exactly, and. Marvin the Martian was my favorite. I had uh-huh. the Marvin the Martian watch that had a flip cap. It's like a little spaceship. So uh, very much feeling the tie aesthetic. The tie aesthetic. But yep. pre-makeover mm-hmm. tie aesthetic. So <laughs> amazing. Not great. Um, and then finally, in this next round, it's that's way harsh tie versus as <sighs> if. And I'm going to start this time with Ama. Oh, gosh. Um... Mm-hmm. <sighs> Way harsh. Okay, uh, Kate. 
We haven't really talked about Way Harsh. We haven't. That's Way Harsh tie is the greatest single gift that this film ever gave me. <laughs> and I think it's telling that like both the setup and this quote were two separate quotes. Yeah. You're a virgin who can't drive. That's way, way harsh. <laughs> like, like I just, anytime anything feels disproportionately unfair or difficult, I do feel saying that's way harsh blank has brought me a great deal of peace. I also really remember when Battlestar Galactica was on, all the memes about Sergeant Ty. It would be like, that's way harsh, Ty. <laughs> Is it Sergeant Admiral Kevin? Anyway, Ty. Commander, I don't know. That's way the harsh. The grizzled anyway. old man. A grizzled old man. That's way harsh, Ty. <laughs> that's hilarious. So... That I am voting for way harsh time. And also the way she says it, like she's so personally she's, upset by she's it. She's like hurt by oh it. Oh my yeah. God. Mm -hmm. like, and she's failed her driver's test. This is rock bottom for Cher Horowitz. It is like it's twisting the neck because it's right after she failed it, which like yes. the time has not yet passed to laugh about it. She's no. literally totally bugging in that yeah. scene. I felt impotent and out of control. <sighs> totally icky. <laughs> Carissa, where are you on this one? This is the hardest matchup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it it's so Titans. Right? Because I love Way Harsh Ty because it is, it's honest and the, she's like crying in this scene and it's really intense. But also, as if, depend, this is the brilliance of Alicia Silverstone. Like, not only is she gorgeous with amazing thick hair that's just so beautiful, but the way that she delivers things throughout this movie, just, she says as if several times and it means something different in every context. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have to give it to this. It's like the clueless version of Smurfy. Like, it could be used for anything. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so then I'm going to go to Amy. <sighs> that was a good argument, Carissa. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I totally paused. Uh, <laughs> as if. Okay. As but. if it is. It, I just want to say it again. It, it, this became, it just became part of my language. I said this all the time. It's more than a quote. I, I think that some of these things are quotes that you could say intentionally, like, oh, like, I'm going to use this quote and somebody's going to know that it's from a movie. Or you could just say as if, like, it doesn't, it didn't be, it didn't need to be from Clueless. It just became. Yeah. yeah like, it's not referential. It just is, yeah. right? It's yeah. lexicon. Yep. Bob. I have some things to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to know if I need to say them. Um, <laughs> um, go ahead and say them. What? So, as if, let me get out my notes. Oh. Amy, you ready? <laughs> he's, got um, <laughs> he's got the receipts. It is said on at least six occasions, and not, not just by Cher. Um, if you were to want to understand what Clueless was and what it meant to culture at the time, you could probably read the oral history of Clueless as told by Amy Heckerling, Amy Heckerling, and the cast and crew. The book is called As If. It is. Um, <laughs> there is it cannot be it cannot be understated how like impactful just this one line was it is something that transcends just the movie i think it's something that everybody picked up everybody took out everybody would it's probably one of the first things people said when they walked out of the movie theater i can't say that i can't prove that but that's that's what it would have done for me um i, I just think from a cultural perspective it's it's still here today that's way harsh tie is a great line it is something that you adopt and start to grow um, attached to over time. And I think that's, that, that is a good thing about it. Right. I think that makes it, it, it holds up in that way, but I, I think it a becomes a relationship to it. Yeah. Exactly. You have a personal relationship to it. Everybody, it may not be the most intensely personal, but everybody I'm generalizing an entire population of the United <laughs> States in the world. Everybody has a personal relationship with as if you say, as if everybody knows exactly what's happening. Everybody yep. knows exactly what you're talking about. It's just like Clueless star Celine Dion when she says, I'm dedicating this song to all of the parents and all of the children in the world. Yes. That's fucking everyone. everyone. <laughs> um, I, I'm, 
going with as if as well. Uh, so I believe it's four for as if. I just blew, blew it up. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. It's fine because when we get to these final four decisions, it's typically pretty like snappy, snappy. So we have a final four of she's a full on Monet versus my buns don't feel nothing like steel. And I totally paused versus as if. First up, Monet versus buns. I'm going to start with Kate. You know what? I'm I'm a chaos agent. Buns. <laughs> okay. Uh, Carissa. Monet. Okay. Bob. Uh, Monet. Okay. Amy. Ah! Um, I don't know. I felt like I was going to have more time. Um... <laughs> I could talk slower. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, hit me with some facts. Um, I don't have any more. I don't have any more facts. This one. Okay, I got some. So in high school, I thought I wanted to be an art history major, and I especially was like so taken with the impressionists, and so. Every year for Christmas, I got a Monet calendar, and then at the end of the year, I would cut it apart and wallpaper my room with the images yes. from the calendar. Pink um, yeah. <laughs> so when my like little nerdy like art passion became like a catchphrase in this movie, it sort of made fifteen year old me just like have a conniption. Um, so. That, does that help? <laughs> I think for, uh, uh, Kate, Kate, Kate brought up at the very beginning of this podcast how intelligent and smart this this yes. script mm-hmm. is. This yep. is one of those things. I made the argument about how like, oh, I have to go Google that if I don't know what that means because mm-hmm. everybody else is in on the joke and I'm not. That's really good. That's well crafted. Um, buns don't feel nothing like steel. Um, it's cute. It's There's definitely some nostalgia associated with it. I love mm-hmm. it and I use it all the time. Um Oh, I you're swaying I, me back, Bob. I was I'm not just sure that people. Not, you really need to know. You absolutely need to know what Buns of Steel is to enjoy that line. And if I showed that to some millennial, this movie to a millennial today, like I'm not sure that they necessarily would. I know people at work who haven't seen Goonies, and I die a little inside every time they say it. Right. So <laughs> the, these these kids, we have to walk them through nature we as we do with the gay community, right? We do absolutely. Um, but I think Monet is something that it's, it's, it's smart. You sound smart when you execute it or when you use it, all of those things. Okay. Yeah. I want to sound smart. Monet. Okay. <laughs> Amma. So before I make my vote, there is one thing that I do want to say that I feel like connects to this. So a quote that I believe was on my list that did not make it to the bracket was that quick couplet right after Ty gets there and they're walking around and Murray has just said the thing to Dion about, Yes, calling yes, her a woman yes. not being misogynistic and then so Ty says you guys talk like grown ups and Cher says well this is a really good school and to, me, that's, <laughs> to me that's like a spectacular way of kind of like for anybody that's been watching this up to this point and being like well these kids talk like adults like that's a way to explain away a fact that adults wrote a movie for teens Yes, mm-hmm. and I think one of the best examples of that is a full on Monet because could it happen Sure, possibly, but is it more likely to happen if an adult rates it? Absolutely. So Mm -hmm. I think it's just kind of indicative of something a little bit bigger. So all of that said, Kate, I appreciate the hell out of the chaos agent strategy, but I am going (laughs) for full on Monet. But please know that my heart is with you. Okay, thank you. I'll stay with the buns just because buns, but all of your arguments are exceptional. And yes, it it is an exceptional example of how smart this script is. Like Like, buns are still specific, but Monet is, sorry, Monet is specific. Buns of Steel is like current to that time. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But mm-hmm. also, like, who did the Buns of Steel's DVDs? Can anyone remember the name Ms. of the Ann person? Summers. No. No. What? No, she just well, she did the Thigh Master. Was it Master? No, I looked it up. It was like some person I'd never heard of. And I was like, how yeah. is this possible? It's like in a Mandala effect thing. Like you would think it's a real Mandala effect. No, no, it was the 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 video was the phenomenon, not the person. Yeah, not the person. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's because it was buns of steel. <laughs> if it was Suzanne Summers, I would be more inclined to do it because like that's a thing, right? But it's not. Um so with all that being said, we we are going to advance she's a full-on monet and i think the point like, like this is a movie which teens are saying words written by adults was such a 90s thing remember like mm-hmm. dawson's creek and yeah. dawson's yeah. creek yeah. Yeah. Same. The 1997 yep yep it, and, so you, and this is how you get the oc too right like yeah. it's this idea of hyper literate hyper smart teens right yeah. we still make terrible choices so yeah. uh, 
with that being said, our, our final final four pair up is uh, I totally paused versus as if we're going to start with uh, Ama. Oh, this is such a hard debate. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this is profoundly difficult. Oh, gosh. Uh, totally paused. Okay. Chaos! <laughs> Amy? Oh, um, no, as if. As if. Uh, as bye. if. I'm sorry, what? Bob. <laughs> Did you call my name? Sorry. <laughs> as if. <laughs> as if. Uh, Carissa. As if. <laughs> Kate. I do say I totally paused on the daily, but I do have to give this to as if for its. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. will also rejoin in with as if. Okay, so <laughs> the final two, she's a full on Monet versus as if. I feel good about this. The least essential decision you will make this year. Uh, <laughs> let's start in the middle of the order with Bob. Whew. I'm going to go with as if. I, I stumped really hard for it. I can't let it go now. <laughs> uh, Carissa. As if. Amy. As if. Uh, Kate. You know, I feel the I see the writing on the wall. I just want to give a, give a little love to full on Monet. Okay, but I have no problem with that if as if takes it. <laughs> Ama, Kate, I'm in the same boat with you in the sense that I I understand what's about to happen here. Like I, I understand how numbers work, but I do also want to give love to full on Monet because again, it's it's something so. Wow, it's so specific and witty. And, yeah, yeah, so yep. specific, so witty. Begets Hagsville, which is also very witty and very specific. Yes, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. But as if transcends this movie in so many ways that I don't think you can do this bracket without it winning. No, you so couldn't. I will no. cast the vote. That I mean, it was already going to accept its fate, but let me just be on the right side of history on this one. And the thing is, I almost took it out of the bracket. That's the funny thing. I, I was like, because it's so, yeah. <laughs> it's like I was like, but it's like saying thanks is a line, right? But like, it's it's not like it was very much a cultural thing. And it, like as you pointed out, it's the literal title of the oral history of this movie. <laughs> it has a cultural cachet that cannot be denied that goes way beyond clueless. But this is where it kind of got its germination. So uh, that is it, folks. Uh, our pick for the best clueless quote of all time is as if as do, if Ugh. do you agree with <laughs> if. do you agree with our choice do you think we're traitors to our generation let us know your pick by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or yell at us on instagram twitter facebook or youtube while you're there make sure that you like and subscribe for more great pop culture debate content and if you really like what you heard please consider supporting us on patreon which can get you access to even more exclusive episodes merch and the ability to suggest episodes for us to do in the future i want to say thank you to my panelists you were like an alaya to me a totally important <laughs> and thank you for listening until next time remember everyone is entitled to their wrong opinions and what the hell we're getting on the freeway <laughs> you did the d <laughs>